The name Apatosaurus means deceptive lizard, and I can't think of a more fitting moniker for a dinosaur with such a complicated history. For the longest time, nobody knew what the head of Apatosaurus looked like. Paleontologists debated over whether it should look more like a Diplodocus or a Camarasaurus, until its real skull was confirmed in 1978. Now that's turning heads. That sound you're hearing isn't thunder. It's the earth-shaking stomp of a Brontosaurus. These dinosaurs have been shaking the big screen for over a hundred years, starting with one of the first ever animated films, Gertie the Dinosaur. Gertie was never the best behaved dinosaur, so hopefully we won't have as much trouble trying to keep this Brontosaurus in line. Hello there prehistoric kingdom friends it has been far too long and i have missed your wonderful faces i am so excited because we have the august dev diary from prehistoric kingdom and you would have seen the incredible footage for the new dinosaurs that we're getting but we're going to jump straight into this one because there is so much to cover in this post we are going over the upcoming improvements coming to update 12 and taking a look at the latest developments along the way since the last Dev Diary, we've been working to address a number of sore spots reported by new players and to improve what was introduced in Update 11. To start, camera controls for panning and rotating will be updated to better support laptop users with new optional keybinds, including a toggle that switches the Q and E keys from raising slash lowering the camera to rotating it left slash right instead. In terms of onboarding, almost completed unified objectives system that will allow us to finish implementing tutorials, notifications and the park issues list showing in the previous dev diary. We've had notification and park issues running internally for a little while now, which means most of the remaining focus is going to tutorials and making them intuitive. For example, if you're playing through a tutorial, there'll be some fancy new highlights that direct you around the UI. Excitingly, this objective system has also been built with scenario missions or quests in mind. The idea of integrating more characters as occasional quest givers is something that the team has wanted to do for a while, so it's nice to have some of that infrastructure in place. We look forward to sharing more about this in the future. Amazing! Okay, so notifications are nearly ready to go, which is awesome, and tutorials. And I love the idea of we're getting quests and scenarios, and I think that's something that we really need in PK, so that is some good, good news. Okay, then in update 12, we are talking about the species spotlight here. So our two titanic duo, Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus, are here to make their cinematic debut, which you guys have already seen. And as you've noticed, our trusty narrator, Nigel Marvin, is doing the voiceover, which we love Nigel. And Nigel, we trust. New species. Ah, the Ankylosaurus. Gorgeous. I love it. I'm so excited for this. The walking tank Ankylosaurus will be wading its way into Prehistoric Kingdom in Update 12. The armoured dinosaurs feature rows of large protective osteoderms and the club tail, perfect for battling the shins of deserving predators everywhere. Alongside its much older relative Sclidosaurus, or Sclidosaurus, depending on which way you're inclined, will be the second Thyrothorum added to Prehistoric Kingdom. I am absolutely in love with this. This is so amazing. I just cannot wait to have this in game. It just brings me so much joy. Look at it. It's just such a little tank. It's, it's just, uh, yeah, it just looks absolutely incredible. Uh, I can't wait to see the colour variations as well. It's so good. The team have made an absolutely wonderful job of this. Super excited. Little bumpies come into PK. Love that. What's a zoo if the visitors can't see properly? Well, not a very good zoo, I would imagine. Update 12 will be bringing a variety of back-end improvements to guest visibility that better supports extremely large and small exhibits. Visitors will also show more realistic crowding behaviours as they try to congregate to where visible animals are. 
This means that since guests can see animals from further away, some visitors will take advantage of elevated terrain or view from a distance rather than always standing directly next to the viewing area. Foliage, fences, scenery and buildings can be used to block guest sightlines and create a more curated experience, just like a real zoo. Oh, that's really cool. I like that. When Update 12 releases, there will be some changes to alleviate some of the efficiency woes experienced by players. Staff will not only carry more resources, but will also queue up multiple tasks at a time. This means that the keepers will be able to refill multiple feeders in a single trip, picking the shortest path between all destinations if possible. The future staff skills training and wages. In the next few updates, we'll be implementing new management and gameplay mechanisms for staff. Here's an overview of how it will work once it's fully developed. Inside the new staff management menu, players will eventually have the options to set the maximum skill level for the employees can train up to. By training at the staff centre in their spare time, a worker can increase their skill level, boost their efficiency. Depending on their role, these perks may come in the form of buffs such as, such as, I think that's maybe a bit of a typo there, but hey ho, we'll move past that. Reducing the time it takes to gather resources. Each job type has preset perks depending on a worker's skill level, there is no RNG. As employees increase their skill, they'll bump up into a higher wage bracket. The salary tab can be used to adjust the minimum and maximum pay for staff across the park. Increasing pay will improve staff welfare and might make workers more willing to put up with poor conditions, while reducing it can lead to people quitting. Side note, we've been adding similar salary controls to the finance menu, eventually letting players set the entry ticket or amenity prices part-wide. We've also been considering scaling down the economy for readability and balancing purposes. Smaller numbers, making 100,000 worth as much as 1 million in the current game. I would welcome that change, to be honest. I find the higher numbers is just a bit hard for you to read and hard to like to try and understand the prices of everything please do that babies yes we're still working on them well between creating and implementing all the new species that all arrived this year we've been working on the assets for ontogery where we can we are currently making our way through painting a lot of baby skins <laughs> That sounds weird, but I know, I know what they're doing. It just sounds weird when you say it out loud. Creating blending shapes for all the growing stages and prototyping animations. We're working on it, but it will take some time to do properly as it's not only touch every animal, but all the animal related systems, both in terms of gameplay and on the technical side, AI, locomotion, Yes, yes, yes. For this month, however, please enjoy the early look at our baby Apatosaurus. Apatosaurus blending shapes. It's using a temporary baby skin and normal map, but the final design shouldn't be too far off. And I love it. It's so adorable. When I scrolled quickly just through the pictures of this dev diary, that is the one thing that caught my eye and I had to use it as a thumbnail because it is gorgeous. Even though it's a work in progress, I am just so excited to see babies in prehistoric kingdom. Animal awareness. To cap off this dev diary, we have a tiny bit of animal AI news. Throughout August, we'll be working at the animal awareness system. When it's finished, this will let animals effectively see and hear their surroundings recognising and prioritising entities based on their size, loudness, etc. Think of it as a getaway to the more requested behaviours like fleeing and conversing between animals. Once it's finished, there will be a lot of exciting stuff to build on top of it. And that, my friends, is the August Dev Diary from Prehistoric Kingdom. Let me know what you guys think of it. What is the most exciting feature that you have learned or seen in this Dev Diary? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you liked the video, then maybe hit the like button. I would greatly appreciate it. Till next time, have a wonderful day. Take care.